Hello stormwater designers, welcome back to our EPA swim training series. In this one we're going over a groundwater model project, so let's open that one up. EPA swim is free, you can download it and follow along. I've been sort of just modeling in real time, making mistakes in real time, so you get to see what the process uh, is like. We have an entire series of our videos in the description if you want to see all the ones I've done before this, covering the basic tutorials and such. So let's open up this groundwater model here. Okay, so this one looks pretty simple on the surface. Let's see let's see what they have us do with this one. So groundwater model. This example shows how to set up a simple groundwater model in SWIM. It consists of a single five-acre subcatchment that is completely pervious and has a groundwater zone beneath it. An aquifer object is used to store the properties of the soil in the groundwater zone. The zone is six feet deep, with the initial water table being three and a half feet above the bottom of the zone and initial moisture content of the soil above that at 40%. An outfall node at four feet elevation receives the lateral outflow uh, from the groundwater zone. The outflow, outflow, outflow rate is 10% of the difference between the groundwater level and the node elevation in CFS per acre. A six hour, two inch rainfall with a triangular shape distribution is applied to the subcatchment. After opening the file, view the properties assigned to the aquifer object and to the subcatchment's groundwater property. Okay. So this is our subcatchment. If you look at the properties here. Okay, so you can see all the different, uh, all the data related to this one. The width, the slope, the amount of impervious. Uh, the infiltration data is using Horton. So I'm assuming the subcatchment, an aquifer object is used if the subcatchment is the aquifer, aquifers. Yeah, so that, that is all this all in the same there. And we can see the conductivity, the slope, the tension slope, the wilting point, uh, the porosity of that aquifer, aquifer there. Then run the model and plot the subcatchment's runoff and groundwater flow along with the outflow, outfall node's total inflow on the same time series graph. So let's run the project. Okay, and we're getting better at plotting these things here. Um, report. So it wants us to um, plot the subcatchment's runoff and groundwater flow along with the outfalls nodes total inflow on the same time series graph. Okay, report graph time series. Let us add the, the aquifers under hydrology. Um, see if I can select it here. There we go. We want so catchments runoff. Okay, good. Except I also want to add again, we want to plot runoff and groundwater flow. Groundwater flow, okay. And then let's add the outfall nodes total inflow. So we want to add the outfall, the total inflow. Okay, let's plot this. So here's the graph here. Um, node inflow in the same time series graph. Create another time series graph that plots the subcatchment's groundwater elevation on the left axis and its soil moisture on the right axis. Okay. So you can see the graph there. This one seems a little more complicated. Time series. We want to plot the subcatchment's groundwater level. Uh, I assume groundwater elevation on the left axis and soil moisture on the right axis. Okay, let's plot that one. So you got the elapsed time, the groundwater elevation, and then the um, soil moisture should be on the right. So that's what we can see there. Note how it takes six hours for the groundwater level to reach the four foot elevation at which groundwater flow can begin. Before this time, the outfall node sees only surface runoff, then it sees combined surface and groundwater flow for another three hours until surface runoff ceases. 
After that, it sees all groundwater flow. This flow keeps rising as the water table height increases due to percolation, percolation from the upper soil zone until hour 19. After that, it begins to recede as the upper zone moisture content is depleted and the water table height drops. See what effect changing the aquifer's conductivity from 0.1 inches per hour to 1 inch per hour has on the groundwater table's behavior. Well, let's try and do that here. Um, let's try and find that value. The conductivity, so maybe I need to go here. conductivity to one let's run it again um let's plot it again time series graph let's do that same thing let's do um groundwater elevation left soil moisture right Okay, let's plot that <laughs> so we can see a big difference there in this one when we change it to one inch per hour. So that's breaking down this aquifer groundwater model project here. We're going to continue to go through the sample projects in future videos. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.